A Short History of Satan. The story begins in the garden, where the snake flatters Eve into enslavement. She drags Adam into a desert of tribal warfare. What happens then? What happens today as we rehearse that story? The snake convinces Eve to eat the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Why? By eating that fruit, she will become like God. One, indivisible, what we would call today an individual. She will indeed define herself. How does she define herself? She's not quite sure yet. But we do have a sense of this when we hear that upon being called by God, Adam and Eve hide their nakedness. They define themselves, and no sooner have they done it than they find themselves exposed naked as bodies. They are defined in a context they do not know. They are in the dark. They have defined themselves not in the light of ideas, of laws. They have defined themselves in a context that is dark to them, an obscure context. And that obscure context defines them as finite, mortal, bodies. Today's upbringing is by and large rehearsing the narrative of a snake. Schools treat students as bodies, sure endowed with some kind of mind, which tends to be read in terms of brain, but again the mind is a function of the body. How so? Freedom, the freedom of the body to do things, to go out, to climb mountains, is seen as the crooks of education. What are we to do? seek jobs, be successful. In any case, cater to the body, identify ourselves. I identify as X, Y, and Z. So we choose our identity. This is a rehearsal of the lesson taught by the snake in the Garden of Eden. What is the alternative to this satanic lesson? In this short history, very short history of Satan, we see that there is continuity. The key to this history that is being repeated as we speak, as we hear today, is rebellion, is betrayal. Rebellion is grounded in an act of betrayal. What are we betraying? Our mandate. What is our mandate as human beings? The classics speak in terms of heroism. Man as man is called to be a hero. What is a hero? A mediator between the body and the mind. 
How is that possible? The snake tells us that to be a hero is ridiculous. You're either a slave or you're the master. You define yourself. And so he invites Eve and through Eve, Adam, to leap to the throne of mastery. We are to be the masters, not the mediators, not the heroic mediators between the body and the mind, between finitude and infinity, but the masters. And what is the result? The result is that in leaping, we define ourselves in a context that we do not know and cannot know as leapers, and indeed we fall back into radical finitude. We see ourselves now as bodies trapped in a world devoid of God, devoid of divine providence. We are in a desert. And what do we do as bodies in an environment that is obscure to us? We struggle. We struggle for survival. We fight. Hence, the tribal warfare that Adam and Eve face upon identifying themselves. They abandon the garden. They can no longer be in that garden. They end up in a desert where there is little that escapes tribal warfare. This is the situation we're in today. Why are we repeating the story? Why are we rehearsing it? Did we not have a modern revolution that invited emancipation, universal emancipation? The serpent flatters Eve. He tells her that she will be free from subjection to authority, to masters. She will be as we are supposed to be as modern men, universally free. That doesn't happen. The promise is not kept. Why? He sells Eve empty words, no commitment to them, empty promises. He doesn't even show himself. He speaks in the penumbra, the dark. His words are borrowed. They're echoes, one might say, of God's words. God speaks from without the garden. In the dark for Adam and Eve, nevertheless, they have access to that darkness through the names, the laws. Adam is there to partake in God's jurisprudence, in God's legislation. He gives names as well. If we are to take those names as mirrors of God's ideas, of the content of God's mind, then that, that practice will constitute a fundamental alternative to the path that the snake is handing to us, is inciting us to take. What is this path, the path of the snake? The word is uprooted from God. It is something that you take, that you extract, that you 
cut off from what is alive, the knowledge that is rooted directly in the mind of God. The fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil is taken off the tree and eaten by Adam and Eve. On this conception of names, we could say a nominalist conception of names, of laws. Laws are objects. They are things that we use, tools, instruments. They function in a mechanical way. What is their function? What is their purpose? What is the purpose of names for the snake? Empowerment. Self-determination. Is that what we achieve? Is that what Eve is achieving? Yes. But not as she supposed she would. She is not determining herself, and Adam is not determining himself as God. They're determining themselves as pieces of meat, as bodies, and they are ashamed. They're scared. They're ashamed because they're scared. They're exposed. They're vulnerable. They need an intervention. Whose intervention? Well, the only intervention that they can recognize at this point in the dark is a bolt of lightning is an authority that comes with vengeance. And this is the authority that they perceive in the Garden of Eden, that chases them from the Garden, because indeed they're incapable of living in the Garden as mere bodies. And so they end up in this desert of tribal warfare. As long as we see names, laws, in terms of objects that we use, uprooted from what is alive, we inevitably end up determining, our, determining ourselves as bodies against other bodies. So the situation is that of, well, what early modernity calls the state of nature, brutality, tribal warfare. The alternative is given in the beginning. Adam is not grasping, taking for himself the fruit of knowledge. He is perceiving the mind of God through the names, in the art of legislation, in the art of jurisprudence. The invitation here is to recognize names in terms of ideas. In other words, to see names in the context of the divine mind. I am not the divine mind says implicitly, Adam, I don't determine myself. I don't create myself. I am not the creator of laws, of names. I borrow the names. I can imitate God's art. I partake in it. But I do not found it. I do not place myself in the garden. Here is the great alternative to our current situation. The snake, of course, in all times, resents exposure. So he floods us with distractions, empty promises. And technology today 
allows the snake to keep going with its work in a very successful manner. He promises us freedom and he delivers enslavement today as in the beginning.